want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the cards, the drugs, from my generation, I'll take the fall. The saints, and the cross the nation, yeah. Welcome to episode 41 of Reliving the War and welcome to July 15th, 1996. WCW Nitro was coming live from Disney's MGM Studios in Orlando once again, while the WWF was showing more taped matches from Greens Bay, Wisconsin. Let's take a look then at Nitro's first 60 minutes. Tony Schiavone and Larry Sabisco remind us that The Outsiders and Hulk Hogan will be on Nitro later in the show. This would mark Hogan's first WCW Nitro appearance in around two months. Fire and Ice took on the Steiner brothers in our opening contest and even though these guys had some shaky matchups in the past, I always enjoy watching these four trying to outdo each other. Norton holds down Rick for a splash but Ice Train misses his target, costing Fire and Ice the match and starting some dissension among Train and and Norton. I love how Norton stuck his knack out just in time for Ice Train to hit him. We could see Fire and Ice arguing with each other as Main Jane interviewed the Dungeon of Doom next, and Kevin Sullivan and company are having a real bad time here because they all have these ongoing rivalries, with only one of them really making sense, that would be the Taskmaster versus Chris Benoit. They're still blobbering on about ending Hulkamania, even though Sullivan said Hogan ended Hulkamania by joining Nash and Hall. Big Bubba apparently has some issues with Lex Luger, a man he will face in tonight's main event. Jimmy Hart says that he'll bring in more Dungeon of Doom members to take on the Four Horsemen. It's getting a bit messy here as the whole purpose of the Dungeon of Doom seems to be yesterday's news. After Dean Malenko announces that he's on a quest to reclaim his cruiserweight title, Mean Gene gets an interview with Fire and Ice. The two men are still arguing and Teddy Long shows up to say he doesn't want to see this great tag team split up. Norton pushes Teddy to the ground before walking off, so it looks like Fire and Ice have now broken up and we're going to see a rivalry between the two men. Billy Kidman vs Dean Malenko took place next, a short but fun match that ended when Kidman missed a shooting star press. This resulted in Dean replying with a brain buster, a powerbomb and finally the Texas Cloverleaf. Kevin Green is back on Nitro and Mean Gene wants to know what Kevin thinks of Hulk Hogan turning to the dark side. Green said Hulk stabbed all the Hulkamaniacs in the back. Kevin said that he himself took his vitamins and said his prayers and it all led to Green becoming a pro within the the NFL. So Kevin is really disappointed in what Hulk did at Bash at the Beach. Green said that he's also ready for Steve Mongo McMichael and Kevin isn't going to wait until the football season ends. Harlem Heat with sensational Sherry in their corner took on Rough and Ready with Colonel Robert Parker in their corner. Rough and Ready featured Mike Enos and Dick Slater and this one is a little confusing seeing as Parker had previously helped Harlem Heat to win the tag team titles. The finish here is even more confusing. We see Parker and Sherry scheming with each other and Parker tells the cameraman to get out of the way. Sherry then kisses Slater while Parker distracts the referee and this leads to Harlem Heat scoring the victory. So we have really no clue whose side Robert Parker is on here but I'm sure all will be revealed as the weeks go on. A pumped up Kevin Green comes back out and he demands a match with Steve McMichael. Gene says that Mongo is avoiding Green and Kevin unfortunately can't wait around any longer because he's got a plan to catch. The first star of Nitro ended with a women's match, Medusa vs Maleo Hosaka, and this one was pretty good if just a little short. Medusa gets the win with a pinning German suplex. Again, another varied 60 minutes of Nitro, but it wasn't as good as last week's by a long shot. I'm giving Raw the unopposed point as I would have been tempted to switch over to see what was going on with the WWF. Shawn Michaels and Ahmed Johnson walk into the building over on Raw and they're already getting an earful from Camp Cornette. 
Just take a moment to appreciate Sean's white blazer, beige trousers and the illustrious fanny pack that absolutely wasn't filled with white powder or other everyday essentials. Tonight, the smoking guns have the opportunity to hold every belt the WWF has to offer as Bart Gunn takes on Ahmed Johnson for the IC title and Billy Gunn takes on Shawn Michaels for the WWF title. The Intercontinental title match is up first while WCW Nitro presents Ming vs Arn Anderson. Ahmed Johnson and Bart Gunn do the whole lock up in the corner thing but the real action is happening on the outside. Sonny allows Jerry Lawler to kiss her hand but Sonny pulls a Ric Flair on Vince McMahon. Jerry Lawler can't stop laughing at this and you can briefly see Vince trying his best not to crack. Ahmed pulls off a nice takedown and both men shake hands after the move. The two lock up again and this results in a hip toss from Ahmed and then there's another. Bart suckers Ahmed in with another handshake and Jerry Lawler again finds this hilarious. Bart then begins going after Ahmed's left arm as Sonny tells the IC champion that he's a loser and we see Shawn Michaels looking a little nervous as he watches the match backstage. Probably just realising that leaving his fanny pack with Marty Jannetty wasn't one of his best ideas. Bart continues to attack the arm and he brings it to the mat. It's been a consistent attack on the body part here and I'm really curious to see if Ahmed remembers to sell it when he inevitably fires up and gets the win. Ahmed begins a small mid-match comeback with a few right hands followed by some headbutts in the corner and to be fair he is selling the arm. Ahmed then rams his shoulder into the ring post when he runs at Bart Gunn in the corner and so Bart begins refocusing his efforts on the injured limb. Bart Gunn again brings it to the mat with an arm bar and I just want to point out this great officiating here from Jack Doan. Jack sees Bart's shoulders on the mat and so he begins a three count. Ahmed delivers a power slam but he can't follow up due to his bad arm. Bart then goes for a top rope bulldog and the impact looks a little rough, not sure what happened here. Ahmed then begins his comeback by crotching Bart on the top rope before hitting the ropes and he completely launches himself out of the ring. Ahmed took more impact than his opponent here. Ahmed and Bart get in the ring and the arm has magically healed. This is notably bad because every piece of Bart's offense was centered around the injured arm for the entire match. Ahmed hits a spine buster, he signals for the finish, we see the Pearl River plunge and Ahmed Johnson scores the win. Even with the bad sale job at the end, this was still a pretty decent match honestly and I didn't get bored at all while watching it. Shawn Michaels cuts a promo afterwards and HBK says he's being stretched a little thin with this WWF title match later on and the international incident six man tag this Sunday. And Shawn says that people have called Ahmed and himself the psychos for letting Sid join their team. But HBK trusts Sid and Cam Cornette will go down this week at In Your House. As Eric Bischoff and Bobby Heenan welcome us to Hour 2 of WCW Nitro, we see the Outsiders standing on top of the Disney MGM Studios entranceway and they're placing NWO banners over the WCW lettering. Bischoff though wants to know where Hulk Hogan is. The cameras pan out to show the NWO banners as the Disney fireworks go off in the background. So we actually have convenient fireworks this week, good job Mickey Mouse. This is one manly match on Nitro isn't it? Arn Anderson vs Ming, makes you feel like a real fucking man watching this match. Ming, thro <laughs> Ming throws a few kicks just to intimidate the enforcer while Anderson puts his fists up. The match gets underway and Anderson ends up taking a kick to the midsection before also taking a chop to the chest. Eric Bischoff begins plugging the Hog Wild pay per view and he says that the event will feature 250,000 of your favourite bikers. I don't even have one favourite biker, never mind a quarter million. Eric also says that around 15 WCW guys, including himself, will embark on a road trip to Sturgis for the Hog Wild pay per view, and I can't imagine any wrestling fans giving a shit about this. Arn has managed to slow Ming down by going after the leg, going toe to toe didn't work at all and so Anderson is going to try another approach. Ming just can't be hurt though, the enforcer ends up back on the mat as we see the barbarian coming down the ringside. Just before we go to commercial break, we see the outsiders watching the action from top of the MGM Studios entranceway and our man Kevin Nash here is enjoying a sweet cocktail. 
Double A has took control as our match continues on, and this boy right here wants to fight the Barbarian, and he's just psyching himself up for the onslaught he's gonna bring. Hard strikes from both Anderson and Ming inside the ropes, as Eric Bischoff completely destroys the aura of this new black and white Hulk Hogan by saying that the movie Mr. Nanny is going to premiere tomorrow night on TBS. That's some seriously bad timing right there. Arn gets dumped out of the ring and he has to sell for Jimmy Hart. Ming brings a chop to the head before Double A takes even more punishment on the outside, and this one has just been a fight, nothing more and nothing less. A vertical suplex from Ming only gets a two count and the decimation of Anderson continues with a side suplex. Arn then creates an opening when he drives an elbow into the back of Ming's head. The enforcer signals for the DDT but Jimmy Hart gets on the apron. This allows the barbarian to hit Anderson and Ming nails the horseman with a standing sidekick. Ming then pins Anderson and it's all over. The Dungeon of Doom gets a win over the four horsemen. It's a point for Monday Nitro. Ahmed vs Bart Gunn wasn't bad, but watching Ming and Anderson just beat the hell out of each other was way more fun. The finish was a little disappointing, but so was Ahmed's selling abilities. Mark Merrow vs TL Hopper next on Raw, while Nitro gives us Chris Benoit vs Eddie Guerrero. I haven't watched the matches yet, but here, Nitro gets the win. Wouldn't it be a real kick in the dick if I was wrong and TL Hopper managed to outperform Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero? There's only one way to find out, it's a dirty job but someone's gotta do it. Goldust's little assistant boy brings a gift to Sable on the entranceway, that ingrate Sable throws the present down to the floor, and now I want to know what's inside the box. What would be the perfect gift for Sable? Let me know in the comments. Have you ever heard TL Hopper's entrance theme? Well, here, have a listen. I like how a YouTube video of this very theme has over 2,000 views, and I also like that our guy Paul here decided to upload it twice, pushing those views to over 3,000. And yes, I'm doing everything possible here to avoid watching this match. TL Hopper puts down his plunger and the bell rings. Mero starts off with a hammer lock and he transitions into an STF, and Sable just looks on as her man beats up a plumber inside the ring. Hopper takes a few Japanese arm drags and give him credit, he bumps around fine for these quick snappy moves, but then he decides to fall over the bottom rope when taking a drop kick to the outside. It just didn't look right. We see Kemp Cornette in the locker room and it was these guys who found HBK's fanny pack by the looks of things. Mark Merrow with a headlock takedown and Sable looks like she really wants to go home. Hopper counters with a head scissors and he looks extremely pleased with himself. Hopper takes control of the match as Vince McMahon says that this guy can wrestle just as well as he can clean out your drains. My drains definitely need a good cleaning out after sitting through this nightmare of a match. Merrow takes a sidewalk slam but he manages to kick out a two. We come back from commercial break and Hopper has our favourite move applied, a good old chin lock. Not a Davy Boy Smith chin lock but a chin lock nonetheless. Thank God Steve Austin appears for a promo. Austin says that he's gonna make Mero pay at international incident for busting his lip. Younger fans who didn't understand about taped matches may have wondered why Stone Cold had a busted lip for nearly four weeks now. Austin says he's the best wrestler in the World Wrestling Federation and he's also the best cheap shot artist in the company. One way or another, Mero will pay at In Your House. Austin's opponent this week on pay per view is getting his ass handed to him by a plumber in the ring though, so I don't think Stone Cold has much to worry about. It's shocking how much offense Hopper has been allowed to get in here. The inevitable comeback begins when Mero dodges a splash, the wild man follows up with a flying head scissors and a back body drop, and then Mark Mero is able to win the match with a punch to the face. A punch to the face. Switching over to Nitro, we have Chris Benoit vs Eddie Guerrero. 
Just before the match, Mongo and Debra cut a promo where Mongo says that he isn't afraid of Kevin Green, even though he wouldn't confront Green earlier in the show. Debra completely brings the comedy here. She rambles on and on about Mongo's football achievements, and it goes absolutely nowhere. She then begins daydreaming in the middle of her promo, and Mean Jean actually laughs at what Debra has to say. Have a look. Farm boys are. Farm boys? Farm boys. Okay, I thank you very much. Chris tells our referee to check Eddie's boots, and this results in the crippler getting in a cheap shot. Benoit then brings the intensity to Guerrero and Eddie takes an absolute beating from the horseman. Chris slams Eddie's head to the mat before choking his opponent on the top rope. And on commentary, Eric Bischoff is still wondering where Hulk Hogan could be. Eddie tries a tilt a world backbreaker but Benoit counters. Benoit then goes for a powerbomb but Eddie reverses with an arm drag takeover. Benoit falls out of the ring and Eddie follows up with a top rope attack from the ring to the outside. Eddie comes back into the match with his signature senton, and Eddie is then able to hit that tilt award backbreaker that he tried earlier. The cameras go back to the MGM Studios entranceway and the outsiders have disappeared. This causes Eric Bischoff a great deal of stress. And back inside the ring, Benoit has again turned this match back in his favour. Guerrero surprises his opponent with a quick side suplex, but Chris comes back with a snap suplex. The crowd begins chanting for Eddie as Benoit applies a lion tamer, and Eddie gets out of the hold by spinning on his head and neck in order to flip the Canadian crippler. This has been nothing short of brilliant so far. Benoit replies with a vicious power bomb, but it only gets a two count. Benoit hits a backbreaker and he keeps the pressure applied after the impact. And at this point, it looks like Guerrero has no hope. Benoit goes to the top rope, but Eddie wakes up and a superplex gets delivered. And then Eddie and Benoit share some hard chops in the middle of the ring. Both men fall to the outside when Eddie reverses a pop up power bomb attempt. The two men fight on the outside of the ring. And then Dean Malenko shows up and he attacks Benoit behind the referee's back. The referee begins counting. Eddie gets back into the ring, but Benoit does not. Eddie wins the match, and Nitro wins another point. Before the Raw main event, we see Cam Cornette backstage, and Jim does what he does best here. He runs his mouth and he promotes the upcoming pay-per-view. Cornette says that Owen, Davey, and Vader versus Ahmed, Sid, and Sean will truly feel like an international incident when these two teams become superpowers at In Your House, and it's going to end with Cam Cornette coming out on top. We then see an Undertaker music video that was promised to us last week, and for those who watch all the videos on my channel, this one is similar to the music video I talked about in my WWF Free For All video, but it isn't quite the same. A lot of people directed me to this video when I pointed out that I'd never heard the music before, and while it's similar, the Free For All version has a sweet guitar riff added on top of the track. Still, it's a good video and Taker fans should go out of their way to check it out. Our Raw main event is a WWF title match, Shawn Michaels vs Billy Gunn. While over on Nitro, the TV title is on the line as Lex Luger defends against Big Bubba. We see some clips of Shawn Michaels doing some charity work with kids, and check this out, these guys hate Shawn so much that they threw a bunch of tennis balls at the heartbreak kid. Shawn is obviously trying to protect his fanny pack here that's filled with sweet nose candy. And I'm sure this isn't the first time Michaels has had balls slammed in his face, but moving on, Billy Gunn gets a title shot in our Raw main event. The drugstore cowboy overpowers Michaels to start things off, not once, but twice. Sonny begins talking smack to HBK and Sean must be thinking, yeah, we'll see about that tonight. We go to a split screen and Ahmed Johnson says he's watching Sean's back, both now and this Sunday at International Incident. I mean, you're his fucking tag team partner, I'd like to think you'll be watching his back this week. Billy Gunn gets launched over the top rope and Sonny gets on the opposite ring apron. Sean gives Sonny a kiss and Billy Gunn tries to take advantage. This leads to Billy Gunn nearly getting hit with sweet chin music. 
A baseball slide from HBK finds its mark and then Sean chases Sonny while trying to grab her ass, that dirty devil. Gunn reverses a top rope attack inside the ring and Billy nails a famouser. Sean replies by sliding outside the ring only to smash Billy Gunn's little cowboys into the ring post. And then Sean hits a slingshot clothesline that sends Billy crashing to the mat. A distraction from Sonny leads to HBK taking the Ric Flair top rope bump and Billy Gunn clothesline Sean over the top rope just before commercial break. We come back and Gunn nearly takes HBK's head off with an elbow smash. Billy then brings it down to the mat and more punishment gets delivered when both men are back to their feet. HBK hits the turnbuckle hard when Billy whips him into the corner. Sean then gets hung up in the tree of woe and Billy continues to decimate the heartbreak kid as Sonny and Jerry Lawler celebrate. A jumping hook clothesline from Billy Gunn looks impressive as we go to split screen once again. Kemp Cornette are playing ball and they're leaving the arena. Billy Gunn takes a great bump when Sean gets out of a bulldog attempt and when we come back from the final commercial break, Sean hits his flying forearm. HBK begins firing up, he hits a drop kick and a body slam and then we see the signature HBK elbow drop. Sean warms up the band and he hits sweet chin music. Michaels wins and Michaels retains the WWF title. Ahmed Johnson waits for Sean backstage but Jim Cornette shows up and he throws coffee all over HBK. Cornette leads Ahmed and Sean into an ambush but then psycho motherfucking Sid literally crashes onto the scene and he chases Camp Cornette away to end Raw. The Michaels vs Gun match wasn't bad at all and Sid's reckless driving was fun to watch so not a bad ending to Raw this week. A video airs on Nitro that says our world is about to change and now I'm starting to get a little anxious about this whole thing. We only have two weeks left of Glacier Month and WCW did say that the guy was going to show up in July. Even though they did totally blow their chance to introduce Glacier as the third man at Bash at the Beach. I wonder what it would have been like if Glacier actually was the third man. What if Glacier had become the leader of the NWO? Man! And then there was one, and it was Sting, and he didn't look too good. Glacier! He's here! Glacier! He's in the building! You're damn right he is! Go get him! Glacier! Yeah, but whose side is he on? Go, what are you talking about? Whose side is he on? What are you talking about? Yes, sir! Get him! Glacier! Here. Go get him, baby! My brother, right? Bischoff reminds us that Hogan and the Outsiders are yet to show up on Nitro as Big Bubba and Lex Luger make their way to the ring. I guess Lex Luger is now a full blown babyface, remember he was doing all that sneaky shit just before Scott Hall showed up, but now it looks like the total package is a stand up guy. Big Bubba starts off with the upper hand but it doesn't take long for Luger to turn things around, knocking Bubba out of the ring and getting a good crowd response at the same time. Bubba gets a little support from Jimmy Hart before Lex takes control of the arm. Lex is able to hit a forearm smash but it only gets him a two count. Bubba reverses a suplex attempt to swing things back in his favour. Lex gets hung up on the bottom rope and Bubba slides out of the ring to hit an uppercut. We then see a limousine. Out comes Scott Hall and Kevin Nash and they sit on their limo as the match continues on. Bobby Heenan says that this looks like a scene from Greece. Big Bubba hits an enziguri and Bischoff calls this a back leg round kick to the back of the head. Luger's attempts at making a comeback get stopped in their tracks as Big Bubba remains in control. Nitro takes its final commercial break as we see the outsiders once again and when we come back Big Bubba kisses Lex Luger. Look I don't know what else you can say here, he brings him to the corner and he kisses him. Bischoff says that Bubba was biting his opponent here but you can't fool me, Lex Luger was just too delicious for Big Bubba. Luger begins firing back but his offensive flurry ends with a double clothesline. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall then begin approaching the ring and then we see the match finish. Jimmy Hart drops something in the ring, Luger picks it up and he hits Big Bubba. 
Luger then lets the referee see what Jimmy threw in the ring, and the ref disqualifies Luger. Way to go, Lex. The outsiders jump into the ring and Lex takes a beating. Hulk Hogan then shows up wearing the same black gear he wore when he went to the dark side while fighting the Dungeon of Doom. Luger takes a jackknife and Big Bubba thinks he's gained an NWO membership, but the outsiders attack him too and Big Bubba gets thrown out of the ring. Mean Gene gets inside the ropes for an interview and Hulk Hogan says he wishes he would have done this two years ago. Hulk Hogan is bigger than the sport of professional wrestling and with the new blood, the outsiders, the new world order is going to rule the whole wrestling world. Mean Gene asks about the children and all the fans, young and old, who Hulk has turned his back on. Hulk says he led everyone's children down the right path but still, the fans of wrestling booed Hulk Hogan. So in that respect, the fans can stick it brother. The Winnie the Pooh family here were particularly disgusted by these remarks. As far as Sting goes, Sting was just a skinny little bodybuilder when he met Hogan in Venice Beach and as soon as Sting laid eyes on Hulk, he began shaking in his boots. Guys like the Macho Man and other WCW superstars who blame Hogan for what he did need to realise that Hogan made professional wrestling. He's the greatest wrestler in the world and he'll always be bigger than the sport of professional wrestling. Mean Gene wants to know who else is going to join the NWO. Hogan says Hall and Nash are just the foundation. And as Hogan builds his army, people will need to wonder if more outsiders will join the NWO or will the wrestlers of WCW begin turning their backs on Eric Bischoff, just like Hulk Hogan. Hogan is going to the top of the ladder once again and Hogan challenges the WCW champion The Giant to a match at Hog Wild. If Hogan wins, he says he'll christen the WCW Championship the NWO Championship. The Faces of Fear, Arn Anderson and the Steiners then come out to face the NWO as Nitro goes off the air. The Hulk Hogan stuff was great, but the Big Bubba vs Luger match was quite poor. But on the other hand, the Michaels vs Gun match wasn't bad at all. It kinda evens itself out this week, so both shows get a point. Another win for Nitro this week on Reliving the War. I felt last week's Nitro was a little better, but the NWO promo at the end, along with the Guerrero vs Benoit match, were both very much worth watching. Raw continues to disappoint really when the cameras begin rolling, and they had a weak show here heading into International Incident, but let's see how they follow up during next week's live show. Nitro now leads our leaderboard with 22 points. Nitro also got the win in the television rating, scoring a 3.4 over Raw's 2.6. Next week we'll go through the international incident results and check out a tag team match pitting the Smoking Guns vs Shawn Michaels and Ahmed Johnson. And over on Nitro we'll see Sting, Luger and Savage do battle with the Four Horsemen. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next week.